Yeah, so this is the early morning session. And we're going to play Joe Biden, corrupt Joe Biden, running a criminal organization with the FBI. Check this out. The country that is at first world well, democracy, where they have the greatest disparities in wealth. It's one of the wealthiest countries in the hemisphere. And because of a corrupt system that exists in Mexico, there is the 1% of the population at the top, a very small middle class, and the rest is abject poverty. Folks, I voted for a fence. I voted, like, unlike most Democrats, and some of you won't like it. I voted for 700 miles fence. But let me tell you, we can build a fence 40 stories high, unless it changed the dynamic in Mexico. And, and, you will not like this, and punish American employers who knowingly violate the law when, in fact, they hire illegals. Unless you do those two things, all the rest is window dressing. Now, I know I'm not supposed to say it that bluntly, but they're the facts. They're the facts. And so everything else we do is in between here. Everything else we do is, 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 is at the margin. The reason why I, parenthetically, why I believe the fence is needed is not related to immigration as much as drugs. I'm the guy that wrote the National Crime Bill. I'm the guy that wrote the National Drug Strategy. I'm the guy that wrote the law that set up a drug czar. But let me tell you something, folks. People are driving across that border with tons, tons, hear me, tons of everything from byproducts from methamphetamine to cocaine to heroin. It's all coming up through corrupt Mexico. So I would have, as they say, the southern part of my state, I have an all I have an altar call with those boys. I have a little son of Lord here. Do you think I'm joking? I'm not joking. Any of you know about me? I've been doing this a long time. I've known every single major world leader in every country for the past 20 years. And I know a lot of them well. You can pick them up like you guys do I've been a senator for only four centuries so long in the history of the United States. Senate. I'm very scared to choose from 44 centuries. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, folks, is we got to level with these folks. Don't tell me, don't tell me in Mexico that you expect to get the same kind of treatment that we give other democracies, and then you don't act in a democratic way. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Yes, sir. Yes, folks, that was corrupt Joe Biden and his criminal gang doing their thing, you know? It's just been going on for a long time. It needs to end now. We're in a situation where we have put together, and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive, and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. <laughs> As I stand here tonight, equality and democracy are under assault. We do ourselves no favor to pretend otherwise. So tonight, I've come to this place where it all began to speak as plainly as I can to the nation about the threats we face, about the power we have in our own hands to meet these threats, and about the incredible future the lies in front of us, if only we choose it. We must never forget, we the people are the true heirs of the American experiment that began more than two centuries ago. We the people have burning inside of each of us the flame of liberty that was lit here at Independence Hall. The flame that lit our way through abolition, the Civil War, suffrage, the Great Depression, world wars, civil rights. That sacred flame still burns. Now in our time, as we build an America that is more prosperous, free and just, that is the work of my presidency, a mission I believe in with my whole soul. But first, we must be honest with each other and with ourselves. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Now, I want to be very clear, very clear up front. Not every Republican, not even a majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. 
Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know, because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. These are hard things. But I'm an American president. Not a president of red America, blue America, but of all America. And I believe it's my duty, my duty to love with you, to tell the truth, no matter how difficult, no matter how painful. And here, in my view, is what is true. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. And they're working right now, as I speak, in state after state, to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies, empowering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards, backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence that are a threat to our personal rights, to the pursuit of justice, to the rule of law, to the very soul of this country. They look at the mob that stormed the United States Capitol on January 6th, brutally attacking law enforcement, not as insurrectionists who placed a dagger at the throat of our democracy, but they look at them as patriots and they see their MAGA failure to stop a peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election as preparation for the 2022 and 2024 election. They tried everything last time to nullify the votes of 81 million people. This time, they're determined to succeed in thwarting the will of the people. That's why respected conservatives like Federal Circuit Court Judge Michael Ludwig has called Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans, quote, a clear and present danger to our democracy. But while the threat to American democracy is real, I want to say as clearly as we can, we are not powerless in the face of these threats. We are not bystanders in this ongoing attack on democracy. There are far more Americans, far more Americans, from every, from every background of belief, who reject the extreme MAGA ideology than those that accept it. And folks, it's within our power, it's in our hands, yours and mine, to stop the assault on American democracy. I believe America is at an inflection point, one of those moments that determine the shape of everything that's to come after. And now, America must choose to move forward or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past, to be a nation of hope and unity and optimism, or a nation of fear, division, and of darkness. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. But together, together we can choose a different path. We can choose a better path forward to the future. A future of possibility, a future to build and dream and hope. And we're on that path moving ahead. I know this nation. I know you, the American people. I know your courage. I know your hearts. And I know our history. This is a nation that honors our Constitution. We do not reject it. This is a nation that believes in the rule of law. We do not repudiate it. <laughs> this is a nation that respects free and fair elections. We honor the will of the people. We do not deny it. And this is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. We do not encourage violence. We are still an America that believes in honesty and decency and respect for others. Patriots and liberty, justice for all, hope, possibilities. We are still at our core a democracy. And yet, history tells us the blind loyalty to a single leader and a willingness to engage in political violence is fatal to democracy. For a long time, we told ourselves that American democracy is guaranteed, but it's not. We have to defend it, protect it, stand up for it, each and every one of us. That's why tonight, I'm asking our nation to come together, unite behind the single purpose of defending our democracy regardless of your ideology. We're all called by duty and conscience to confront extremists who put their own pursuit of power above all else. Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving American democracy than MAGA Republicans are to destroying American democracy. We, the people, will not let anyone or anything tear us apart. Today, there are dangers around us. We cannot allow to prevail. We hear you heard it. More and more talk about violence as an acceptable political tool in this country. It's not. It can never be an acceptable tool. So I want to say this plain and simple. There is no place for political violence in America, period. None, ever. We saw law enforcement brutally attack on January 6th. We've seen election officials, poll workers, many of them volunteers of both parties, subject to intimidation and death threats. And can you believe it? FBI agents, just doing their job as directed, facing threats to their own lives from their own fellow citizens. On top of that, there are public figures today, yesterday, and the day before, predicting and all but calling for mass violence and rioting in the streets. This is inflammatory. It's dangerous. It's against the rule of law. And we, the people, must say, this is not who we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't be pro-insurrectionist uh, pro pro and pro-American. They're incompatible. We can't allow violence to be normalized in this country. It's wrong. We each have to reject political violence with, with all the moral clarity and conviction this nation can muster. Now, 
We can't let the integrity of our elections be undermined, for that is a path to chaos. Look, I know politics can be fierce and mean and nasty in America. I get it. I believe in the give and take of politics, in disagreement, in debate, and dissent. We're a big, complicated country. But democracy endures only if we, the people, respect the guardrails of the republic. Only if we, the people, accept the results of free and fair elections. Only if we, the people, see politics not as total war, but mediation of our differences. Democracy cannot survive when one side believes there are only two outcomes to an election. Either they win or they were cheated. And that's where the MAGA Republicans are today. They don't understand what every patriotic American knows. You can't love your country only when you win. It's fundamental. American democracy only works only if we choose to respect the rule of law and the institutions that were set up in this chamber behind me. Only if we respect our legitimate political differences. I will not stand by and watch. I will not the will of the American people be overturned by wild conspiracy theories and baseless evidence-free claims of fraud. I will not stand by and watch elections in this country stolen by people who simply refuse to accept that they lost. I will not stand by and watch the most fundamental freedom in this country, the freedom to vote, and have your vote counted and be taken from you and the American people. Look, as your president, I will defend our democracy with every fiber of my being, and I'm asking every American to join me. <clears throat> Throughout our history, America has often made the greatest progress coming out of some of our darkest moments like you're hearing that bullhorn. I believe we can and must do that again, and we are. MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. They spread fear and lies. Lies told for profit and power. But I see a different America. An America with an unlimited future. An America that's about to take off. I hope you see it as well. Just look around. I believe we can lift America from the depths of COVID till we pass the largest economic recovery package since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And today, America's economy is faster, stronger than any other advanced nation in the world. We have more to go. I believe we can build a better America. So we passed the biggest infrastructure investment since President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And we've now embarked on a decade of rebuilding the nation's roads, bridges, highways, ports, water systems, high-speed internet, railroads. I believe we can make America safer. We passed the most significant gun safety law since President Clinton. I believe we could go from being the highest cost of prescriptions in the world to making prescription drugs and healthcare more affordable. So we passed the most significant healthcare reform since President Obama signed the Affordable Care Act. <clears throat> and I believe we could, create, we could create a clean energy future and save the planet. So we passed the most important climate initiative ever, ever, ever. The cynics and the critics tell us nothing can get done, but they're wrong. There is not a single thing America cannot do, not a single thing beyond our capacity, if we do it together. It's never easy, but we're proving that America, no matter how long the road, progress does come. Look, I know the last year, a few years have been tough, but today, COVID no longer controls our lives. More Americans are working than ever. Businesses are growing. Our schools are open. Millions of Americans have been lifted out of poverty. Millions of veterans, once exposed to toxic burn pits, will now get what they deserve for their families and their compensation. American manufacturing has come alive across the heartland, and the future will be made in America. No matter what the white supremacists and the extremists say, I made a bet on you, the American people, and that bet is paying off, proving that from darkness, the darkness of Charlottesville, of COVID, of gun violence, of insurrection, we can see the light. Light is now visible. Light that will guide us forward, not only in words, but in action. Actions for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for America. Even in this moment, with all the challenges we face, I give you my words of Biden, I've never been more optimistic about America's future. Not because of me, but because of who you are. We're going to end cancer as we know it. Mark my words. We're going to create millions of new jobs in a clean energy economy. We're going to think big. We're going to make the 21st century another American century. Because the world needs us to. That's where we need to focus our energy. Not on the past. Not on divisive culture wars. Not on the politics of grievance. But on a future we can build together. The MAGA Republicans believe that for them to succeed, everyone else has to fail. They believe America. Not like I believe about America. I believe America is big enough for all of us to succeed. And that is the nation we're building. A nation where no one is left behind. I ran for president because I believe we're in a battle for the soul of this nation. I still believe that to be true. I believe the soul is the breath, the life, and the essence of who we are. The soul is what makes us us. The soul of America is defined by the sacred proposition that all are created equal in the image of God. That all are entitled to be treated with decency, dignity, and respect. That all deserve justice and a shot at lives of prosperity and consequence. And that democracy, democracy must be defended, for democracy makes all these things possible. <laughs> Folks, and it's up to us. Democracy begins and will be preserved in we, the people's habits of the heart, in our character. Optimism that is tested yet endures. Courage that digs deep when we need it. Empathy that... Fuck Joe Biden. These people are looking for souls. All right? Don't let them get your soul. Don't let them get your soul. Oh, fuck Joe Biden. Fuck all the Bidens. 
ברוך הבא, מזוהר.